It's a sort of, it's not particularly a narrative, a Christmas narrative, so mm -hmm. much as a collection of some of the ideas. And you know, there's mm -hmm. reference to the gold myrrh and incense and a cold mm -hmm. winter, you know. Is it for upper or for full voices? It, or four voices and organ. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And where will that come in the service? Um, well, I don't know yet. All oh, right, okay. Uh, because it's been commissioned for this recording. All oh, right. So we should probably put it in the service, either the radio mm. one or the television one. Mm. But I haven't quite got that far in the planning. Sure. Mm. And the Tansy Davis piece is that um, the we boys' did voices. That or? no, that's for a uh, full choir with a lot of divided voices. It's quite a bit mm. of texture. Mm. Mm. Oh, that sounds lovely. That'd be wonderful. And um, what? Uh, presumably, you'll be keeping some of the traditional carols that we, we normally hear. Oh yes, there will be. Um, I can't exactly remember the track list at the moment, sure. but I mean, you'll certainly get. I mean, the, the, the whole CD that's going to come out is, ba I mean, the basis of it is the 2010 Christmas Eve Carol oh, Service. Okay. So you'll have Once in a David City with a right. solo boy, and you'll have O Come Will Faithful and Hark the Herald Angels and all of that. Lovely band of the tra traditional and the new things. That's right, <laughs> yeah, you'll have that, that's right, that's what you'll have. And you're also going to have six or so of the most recently commissioned Carols. You know, I, I um, commission one annually. Mm -hmm. And we, hello, well, thank you, Mark. Um, and about oh, five, six years ago, we recorded the first 24 and 25 of these for EMI, oh. and we've now recorded under our own auspices the one. This is a catch up process, so right. we bring it up to <laughs> the date. Backlog. Yeah. Uh, so we've got, I think, John Woolrich, uh, Tanta Davis, we've got Brett Dean. Mark Anthony Turnage. Fantastic. I mean, it's quite a, mm. a roster of names. Indeed. And I'm really rather, uh, though I say it myself, I think it's one of the things I'm quite proud of that we've been mm -hmm. able to attract the, the really leading composers Absolutely, of yeah. the time to show that you know they are interested in writing for a liturgical choir. Absolutely, yeah, that's wonderful. Because I think, too, I mean, uh, to get on, no, I'm getting on my hobby horse now. <laughs> Quite Please a do. lot of church music, you know, that's written for, written, written for services, I think is very much kind of utilitarian. And what I uh -huh. wanted to, what I wanted to show with this series is that you can have really successful pieces written by the best composers. Yes, which do more than just um, it, serve a purpose in the service. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. I just wanted to ask you, I don't know how much you're at liberty to disclose about this, but um, I, I know this is part of the new um, collaboration with LSO Live. Um, do you have any um, plans to work with the LSO as part of that? Uh, uh, no. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> whether they will, uh, whether such plans will transpire, right. I don't know. OK. I mean, we do do quite a lot of work with orchestras. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the Academy of Ancient Music, we do our sort yes. of early repertoire. Mm -hmm. We're doing concert early next month of Handel, Geeks at Dominus, and actually the Mozart Requiem, which is sort of, we, as you know, we recorded them. And Britain Symphonia, mm -hmm. we've we done, uh, uh, we did the Macmillan Seven Last Words last Good Friday. Oh, yes, I heard a review. Maybe. Last year we also did Britain St. Nicholas, and we're planning to record that with them. In oh, fantastic. December, and we work also with the Philharmonia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just really what tends to come along. So, sure. But I mean, the answer to your straight question is, as of now, no. All right, I wondered yeah. if there were any yeah. Easter, Passion or Messiah plans in the pipeline, but... No. Not the moment. Okay. Yeah. And do you have any, any further commissions, once you've caught up with this backlog? Of um, well, the next, this coming Christmas Eve, we're going to have a carol from the Australian composer Carl Vine. Ah, oh, right. He's just, he'd been working in this country a few years ago, went back to Australia. Uh -huh. And... Um, Yes, so it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. I haven't I got the music yet. I've heard mm. some of his things on the Tall Poppies label. I think he reads right. for them. So there's yeah, certainly, I mean, there's yeah. quite a little collection of string quartets amongst other things. That's yes, I think that was, that was yeah. the one. Mm. Well, that sounds fantastic. And does he have ties with Kings? Or? No. no. Well, there's a there's a link in that one of our former choral scholars was his publisher mm -hmm. at Faber's. So it's a little bit of a circle. There's normally a you know. somewhere. But I mean, I must say, I haven't had any definite policy with these commissions. Mm -hmm. I have been. I haven't sat down and made a kind of a wish I mean, list. Yeah. A wish list. Uh, it's been rather nice actually, in that very many of them have arisen out of 
sometimes almost, you might say, chance mm. circumstances. I remember going to a party in Cambridge and meeting Judith Weir for the first time, right. and that's how we got that. And then right. I found myself in the bowels of the Albert Hall with Harrison Burt whistle one day before a prom. <laughs> and I said, I, I found myself, I mean, it was entirely unpremeditated, I found mm. myself saying, how would you like to write a piece for Kings? And to my surprise, he said yes. And so I think those kind of the chance circumstances, the chances mm. have been um, rather successful. Yeah, certainly. Mm.